Welcome to my talk um, about importance of patient participation at protocol stage and its impact on outcomes, in which I present an experience from a network meta-analysis with breast cancer patients. My name is Tina Jakob. I'm a research associate at the University Hospital of Cologne, and I'm also a member of Cochrane Hematological Malignancies. Um, first of all, um, the project was funded by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, Germany, and therefore does not lead to any conflicts of interest. And what will this talk be about? So I will um, talk about the background of the project, and then I will just very briefly uh, talk about the methods of network meta-analysis, then the procedure and importance of patient involvement, and uh, the results in our conclusions. So the title of the project is Bone Modifying Agents for the Prevention of Bone Loss in Women with Early or Locally Advanced Breast Cancer, a Systematic Review and Network Meta-Analysis. And the background um, is that anti-cancer treatments unfortunately cause bone density loss, which is associated with complications like pain and bone fractures. And therefore, these bone modifying agents are additionally given to prevent bone density loss. And since the Federal Ministry of Education and Research also saw this topic as very important, they funded the project and it is now registered as a Cochrane Review with a breast cancer group in Australia. And the funder and also Cochrane um, already have patient involvement policies. So we had our guidance with that. So here on the right, you can see uh, the overview of the bone modifying agents that exist. And at the moment, it's unclear which is the best in terms of um, efficiency. So for example, um, preventing bone density loss and then therefore preventing fractures or even bone metastasis. And also safety, so regarding adverse events. So there's a huge need for a comparison. And um, I would just very briefly talk about the methodology of network meta-analysis to give you um, who might not know about it an overview. And also I used similar slides when um, we had the meeting with the patient representatives so you know what happened. So a network meta-analysis is a very complex method to compare different treatment options in one analysis. And the aim of it is to generate a hierarchy of treatment options. And to start with, what most of you are probably very familiar with is um, the concept of a normal meta-analysis, where we have the comparison of two treatment options um, through studies. So in this case, we have three studies comparing the same treatment options, A and B. And, and we can calculate an overall effect of these studies. And then we have the result as either favoring treatment A or treatment B or favoring neither of the two. But then we can also have um, another treatment options, in this case, treatment C. And we can have a study that is comparing treatment A with treatment B, and then also a study comparing treatment A and treatment C. But what we want to know is also what's better, treatment B or treatment C. And since we have a joint comparator here, we are able to calculate an indirect comp comparison. Um, and this is also our smallest network that we can get already. And then there can be even more interventions. And we probably have studies, um, but not comparing all of them directly with each other. So the black lines indicate the um, where we have evidence through studies. But then we also probably want to know how is treatment C compared to treatment F. And so we want to compare all of them with each other. So we again have direct and indirect comparisons here and this is what the methodology of network meta analysis is all about and then in the end we hopefully have a hierarchy of treatment options so in this case treatment c would be the best and then followed by treatment a and treatment e and the network that uh, of our project so this is an ideal network 
looks like this. So on the, in the blue dots, you see all the different bone modifying agents again. Um, but we don't have evidence like those black lines is like in an ideal world, we don't have them. So we also have direct and indirect comparisons in the end. So why do we need patient involvement in this? Um, since different interventions might be differently efficient and may cause different kinds and magnitudes of adverse events, I think it's especially important to have patient participation um, when considering outcomes, especially when conducting network meta-analysis. So what did we do? Um, the involvement of patients and their representatives was already part of the grant application, so we had travel costs covered. And then we contacted the Frauen Selbsthilfe nach Krebs e.V., which is a self-help organization of breast cancer patients in Germany. And we quickly realized that a call would work much better than only email. And then also calling from the university hospital, the women on the phone were quite skeptical about um, what I had planned. So they were fearing that I want to conduct another study or something. So it took some time to convince them that I was really only interested in their opinion and it was really important to have their opinion on the project. And after convincing them, we invited them for a meeting to discuss the project and especially the outcomes. And in the end, it was three patient representatives and two review authors who participated in the two hour meeting. Uh, the plant analysis was presented in German language and we explained what impact this evidence might have for decision making of patients and clinicians and also to inform national and international guidelines. Um, we then discussed predefined outcomes and asked questions like are outcomes missing and does the order of outcomes reflect their importance? So this was the list of outcomes we initially planned. And after the discussion, we changed the order of these two outcomes. So we changed bone density as the first outcome now and over fracture rate as a secondary outcome. Um, this was due to the woman describing that the bone density was measured very regularly and they felt in control by um, seeing how the medication worked. And since none of them had any fractures, they didn't consider this as a very most important um, outcome. And then also we added other outcomes, which was um, bone pain right after administration, which came up, and also the occurrence of bone metastases. So as a conclusion, I can say it's very important to involve patient and patient representatives at, in early steps of the review development process and also throughout. So we are all still in contact and uh, keep in touch. They all agreed to be um, contacted by me and um, especially important when performing network mechanisms because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. The change in outcomes will lead to a more patient relevant focus of the review and limitations where we didn't ask um, for potential conflict of interest and we are now very aware that this might also be a problem um, with patient representatives, so we will do that in the future. And um, this time we were very lucky because we had very informed participants who had an individual as well as a very broad patient perspective, but we also had other experiences where this was not given. So we will always focus on this as well. And special Thanks, uh, I want to say to all the co-authors of this work and the first three um, co-authors listed here are the participants um, of the meeting and from Frauenselbsthilfe-Nakrebs e.V. And with this, I would like to thank all of you for listening and your attention and please contact me with any questions you might have. <laughs>